am outraged. He denied your father the opportunity to live. I wouldn't be in support of his release at any point of my life. What's up y'all, it's your girl Beatavia and I am back with another video. If you do not know me, my name is Beatavia. I'm from Washington, D.C. and I am also an entrepreneur. Make sure that you are subscribed, like the video at the end if you like it, and give your feedback. Now, today we will be talking about Sirhan Sirhan, and if you don't know, who this is stay tuned if you don't know who Sirhan Sirhan is let me introduce you to him this is the man that assassinated Robert F Kennedy his assassination came only a short time after his brother's assassination John F Kennedy and as you know John F Kennedy was the president at the time of his murder mr. Sirhan committed this heinous crime in 1968. Sirhan Sirhan was just granted parole by a California board in late August. I wanted to talk about this myself because I am outraged, okay? He has been in prison for 53 years and was granted parole on his 16th appearance before a parole board. Surprisingly, two of Robert F. Kennedy's sons are in support of his release, which I really don't get. Maybe, you know, it's possible they are thinking of it in a very positive way, like maybe it's something that their father would have wanted for him to have a chance in the free world again, but I wouldn't support that. As far as Sirhan's motive for killing Kennedy, he stated that he felt personally betrayed by Robert F. Kennedy because Kennedy showed support for Israel in the 1967 Six Day War. This war began one year to the day before Robert F. Kennedy's assassination. This Six Day War was known as the Third Arab versus Israel War. And this war was between Israel and an Arab coalition. It lasted from June 5th, 1967 to June 10th, 1967. Sirhan, being from Palestine, he felt he was killing Kennedy for his country. June 5th, 1968, Robert spoke to journalists, press, etc. at a live celebration that was televised. This event ended a little after midnight. Kennedy left the podium and went through a kitchen hallway, which was supposed to be a shortcut. When he was gunned down, there was a lot of people in this small hallway. There was press, fans, security. Robert Kennedy was shaking hands with a young man when he was shot. 24-year-old Sirhan came through the crowd and let off eight rounds from a 22 caliber revolver. Three bullets ended up hitting RFK. Once in the head and twice in the back, there was a fourth shot that went through his jacket. Because it was such a tight hallway, five other people were also shot, but by the grace of God, all of them survived. Robert Kennedy, however, fought hard to survive, but unfortunately, he passed away the next day on June 6, 1969. That same year, Sirhan was convicted and sentenced to death. Just three years later, his sentence was reduced from death to life in prison. Even with his victories, his prison life was even worse than his life in the real world, as he put it. He had to keep being moved from facility to facility for reasons that were not explained to him and because he had fears for his own safety, with everyone knowing exactly what he did and who he hurt. As recent as 2019, he was reportedly stabbed multiple times by another inmate. Sirhan firmly believes that, and I quote, if Robert Kennedy were alive today, he would not agree with slinging me out for this kind of treatment. 
it's funny when people who have done very bad things say stuff like this. I feel like Ted Bundy was feeling the same type of way about his treatment in prison and the conditions and stuff like that. But my thing is, if you wouldn't have did what you did, you wouldn't be where you were. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it's what you deserve... And you didn't, just because you didn't know prison life was like that. Is that supposed to make us feel bad for you? I don't know. And it doesn't work on me. Along with the support of two of Robert Kennedy's sons, one of Sirhan's living victims, who was 91 at the time of the parole hearing, one of the parole hearings testified in support of his release as well i don't know why y'all doing this mm -hmm. i don't know why y'all are in support when he either shot you or he shot your your father he he denied your father the opportunity to live that's not right period that's all I would think about. I don't know if that's totally negative, but I feel like that's just right. While Sirhan says that he does not remember committing this crime, he does not remember the shooting all that well, saying that he cannot confirm or deny that he did it. The 91-year-old shooting victim stated that he believes that there was a second shooter, making Sirhan the distraction this specific conspiracy has been discussed on just about every documentary and every crime show were there more than eight bullets fired were there two shooters was there a second gun that was recovered from the scene i tell you one thing if he would have shot me i wouldn't be in support of his release at any point of my life Especially if that's his excuse or his motive. Um, his explanation for it all. I understand that the Six Day War was very traumatic and devastating to y'all people. But you got to understand being a politician, you got to be for or against certain things. You got to stand on what you believe in. And unfortunately, that's something that got rfk killed is 53 years a long time yes it is i be in support of some people's release but it's his actions overall that got him there number one and just because he has had a hard time in prison that's supposed to mean that i feel bad for you at some point no i will never feel bad for you just imagine how bad RFK feel that he couldn't raise his kids, you know, that he couldn't help his wife with that, that they couldn't have another child because she miscarried. Like, you took a lot from that family to the point where RFK's murder is a part of a conspiracy that the Kennedys overall won't live long or the Kennedys are cursed. But... For Sirhan, he did not have to gun that man down like that. It was very targeted. It was very premeditated. He knew exactly when he wanted to do it. He knew the right moment to do it, unfortunately. And a lot of other people got hit. But what makes it really unfair is he got the target. He got his target, you know? Them other people wasn't a part of the plan. But how do y'all not see that as like an act of terrorism? You don't care who's around. You don't care who gets hurt. Who, God forbid, dies. You out to get one person, one person only. And it's you. It's your motive. It's not even Israel. Um, It's not even Israel or israelis as a whole they got a problem with rfk it's your problem do people really think that time erases the bad that they've done the thing about it with me and the way i see it is the bad you've done won't change you know you can't go in the past and erase it 
And that's for everybody, whether you didn't kill somebody or you just jaywalk. But I also judge the character of the person. Like the fact that he even mentioned the victim and say, oh, such and such, RFK, he wouldn't even want me to be in this position. How you gonna speak for a man that you shot? How you gonna speak for not only a man that you shot, but a man that you killed? That's what we not gonna do. And to me, that's like some sick shit. Excuse my language. It's about the character that you currently have. And his character speaks loudly to be still very selfish. He committed this murder off a of selfish emotion. If that's even like a term. I think it is, but if it's not, I just made it up, okay? Selfish emotion. It's all about how you feel. So you're gonna act on that. It's not about you and your people. They probably ain't even think about pressing the issue with him. Or maybe they did because he was supposed to be in the running to become president. That's something that he wanted to do. That's something that he probably would have done after his brother anyway if his brother wouldn't have got killed. It takes a strong man to show face and not go into hiding after a close, close family member gets gunned down like that. His blood brother gets assassinated for the whole world to see. And he still shows face to be the senator that he loved being and to become the president. That's a very strong man. The way that I see it, RFK would want you to be in jail for as long as possible for a lifetime. He doesn't have the opportunity to breathe, you do. It don't matter where you breathing at, you could be in the jungle. Feel what I'm saying? You could be in the jungle and that's scary too. Lions, well it ain't no bears, I'm sure. I don't know, it's getting to a stupid point with me, but anyways. Monkeys, things that can really hurt you, right? The jungle is scary, right? Okay, so prison is a form of a jungle. You never know what might show up at your front cell door. You, you never know who would want to be a opponent to you. You never know, and you always feel like you in danger, right? So it don't matter where you're breathing at, you're breathing. You shouldn't be the one complaining. I said with Ted Bundy, he was complaining and you slaughtered many, many young girls. How is anybody supposed to feel bad for you? But the parole board decided, they have decided, right? The judicial system is such a bitch. I really don't understand it. If I, I understand, no, I don't understand. Hold on. How you go from death and that gets overturned to life in prison to after 53 years, after half of that life sentence, you get the chance, you, Sirhan, gets the chance for parole. Is this what we doing? I thought life meant life. Can we put some 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 real I'm I'm not understanding. Okay? The two sons, unfortunately, you know, sometimes the kids be so young that they just don't get it at that point when it happened. Maybe you didn't know your father's impact and how strong he was, you know? And I was a child too. I was a child when I found out about all of these things. I was a child when I seen that footage. I was a child, but I sympathize with him, with his family that he created, with his wife, and with the whole entire Kennedy family as a whole. I mean, when I seen that, how can you not pray for Jackie? How can you not pray for, how can you not pray for RFK and JFK's father? 
their mother. I mean, it's a lot, and, and y'all in the family. Maybe, the, like I said, maybe they are thinking about it in a totally positive way, and they were raised up very beautifully where they see it a totally different way, and that's fine. I just would not be on that side, okay? And I'm sure that their support has caused a rift. A lot of things have caused rifts within the Kennedy family. I hope that it doesn't break them, but honestly, why y'all had to come out and say that y'all support? Why y'all had to come to the hearing and say that y'all support it? If y'all gonna do some snake moves, I'm with it. If y'all gonna say, oh yeah, he should be released to snake him out, bet. Do it. Okay, so they can turn it into a movie and I can see it. You feel what I'm saying? Like, do some Harvey, what's his name? Lee Harvey Oswald shit. You feel what I'm saying? Like, do something. If if this is just for him to get out and be able to live his life on, and if he got grandkids, he can see his grandkids and et cetera, et cetera, I'm not with that. I'm not with it. Your family got to make a decision. Do they want to bring their grandkids up to see the grandfather at the prison? Judge, jury, I wish I was the judge. Sirhan didn't give Kennedy a chance to plead his case, to beg for his life. The minute he walked up, it was gunfire. So, me, I don't understand within any amount of time, is it right for him to have an opportunity to live a free life? He decided to end the life of a future president. How is that not a person that needs to be confined for the rest of their lives? Do y'all need him to get out and do another murder on a politician or a senator? Because he might get selfishly emotional and he might take something to the heart again you never know especially with him making excuses like this um, there may have been more than eight bullets some say there were close to 12 to 13 shots and with those 12 to 13 shots that does suggest another shooter but what i don't understand about that or what doesn't make sense to me is the hallway was too tight. It was too many people in that hallway for nobody to see a second shooter. For the cameras to not see a second shooter. The security of Kennedy was literally on top of Sirhan in seconds trying to get the gun, pry the gun out of his hand. No one could escape that little space that quick. That's the exact reason that five people were shot. Five people wouldn't have been shot if that hallway wasn't, um, if that hallway wasn't so tight. There was literally no exits to this hallway or like different avenues of a hallway. It was just a straight up and down hallway. It's unfortunate that Kennedy was in such a vulnerable spot. I really think that the security should have learned from from JFK's assassination that there literally has to be a security bubble around these men. That's the only way. And somebody still might try. He was literally undefendable in that spot, in that particular spot. But that's what Sir Han intended. He was watching him from the other side of the hallway. If a person is giving you their motive, and telling you it was premeditated, why would you give them the opportunity to potentially walk free and get emotionally invested enough to do this again? He ain't never say that he wouldn't do it again. We never know what this 53 year prison sentence really did to him. If he was already like that at 24 years old and nobody stepped in to correct it, Nobody stepped in to talk him down. No family, no friends, no associates. 
I want y'all to sound off on how y'all feel in the comments below. And remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Nope. Subscribe. And I will see y'all in the next video.